Ben Irwin at the door to hell gas crater in Turkmenistan. Photo credit Ben Irwin opinion it's 3 a.m. and it suddenly dawns on me that I'm on the dance floor of a brothel in Turkmenistan. To be clear, this wasn't where I had envisaged ending up on a night out in Ashgabat the capital of the former Soviet bloc state. Me and two Kiwi mates were lured here on the promise of a disco in the basement of the city's most luxurious hotel, the Grand Turkmen. Broken English and our complete lack of Russian didn't help our fortunes but hey, we had got a lot more out of Ashgabat than we expected. The basement disco in a brothel. Photo credit Ben Irwin you see, Ashgabat is the center of power for Gurbanguly Berdimuhamado the longtime president of Turkmenistan, known for both his abysmal human rights record and iron fist rule. Ashgabat is a reflection of Berdimuhamado in many ways initially appearing polished and poised, but paranoid and pretend on closer inspection. For those reasons and more, the city of one million is often compared to North Korea's capital of Pyongyang. We had found ourselves in this closet off country, north of Iran, for a few days, while driving 15,000 kilometers from England to Mongolia as part of the Mongol rally. After entering the country on our strict five-day transit visas, the first thing we notice about Ashgabat is the astonishing level of grandeur and order. The highways are impeccable, whistleting police line the streets and the city skyline almost wholly consists of large, white marble cladded buildings. On a side note, Ashgabat has the honor of holding a proper Guinness World Record for the city with the highest concentration of white marble buildings. One of the many marble buildings. Photo credit Ben Irwin, but the thing is, this is all a sham the city is a big expensive fake, built purely to please an imagine conscious leader. Most of the grand marble buildings we saw sat empty no people, not even furniture. They were built purely to pump up the country's image for the upcoming Asian Indoor and Martial Arts Games, described as a hello world moment for the country. According to a recent AFP report, the Olympic Village alone was built at a cost of US $7 billion that's about 17% of Turkmenistan's entire GDP, according to World Bank data. That's like New Zealand spending US $30 billion plus, or over NZ $40 billion in a village purely for a mildly respectable continental martial arts tournament. It's crazy money, but not totally surprising, considering President Berti Muhammadu's track record of skewed priorities and fostering a cult of personality. As it turns out though, Ashgabat has an underbelly of beer-loving, karaoke-singing youth who want their secretive state to change tack and plot a new course. We made friends with a group of this burgeoning class of Turkmen thanks to the most typical of Soviet diplomatic tools vodka. The bottle of vodka Russian made, we were assured, was offered by a member of a mountain bike club. We ran into around a dozen members on a Sunday afternoon bender near our hotel at one of the few bars in the city. A man named Camel said talking to us was one of the few opportunities in life had get to interact with non-Turkmen. We told stories of our rally, which had up until then included traveling through Europe and parts of the Middle East. The idea of crossing a border in a car blew their minds. Even simply leaving their home country was a foreign concept. Camel said wages in Turkmenistan were so loyal locals couldn't afford to travel, even to neighboring countries. Another man, sidling up to my rally teammate Scotty, asked a barrage of questions about New Zealand. He was envious of the freedom we enjoy and often take for granted. We are a closed country, we do not get visitors, he said. Tonight we celebrate. And celebrate we did. The basement disco in the brothel. Photo credit banner when first we were shown the town's only karaoke bar, hidden a slightly nerve-wracking 20-minute taxi ride out of the city center. Later in the night, after subpar renditions of Bon Jovi living on a prayer and eagle-eyed cherries save tonight, we were talked into checking out a disco in a hotel basement. And, well, I already gave it away in the intro, but yes this was actually a brothel. It wasn't obvious at first there was a busy bar, a packed dance floor and a rather inviting Jägermeister machine. What gave it away, though, were the pimps. And the prostitutes. Heaps of them too. I'm still not quite sure why the locals brought us here. Maybe they wanted to impress us kind of like their president. Ben Irwin is a TV reporter for News Hub. He traveled to Turkmenistan as part of the Mongol rally, raising funds for Canterbury West Coast Air Rescue.